All right, well, we are back. It is Bible Time Episode 2, so go grab your families and let's get started. We are preparing to go through the book of 2 Timothy, but before we can get to 2 Timothy, we have to walk through, hey, what exactly motivates Paul? Why does Paul do what he does? And so in that last episode, we saw that Paul saw this vision. He saw the vision of the Messiah, of this, of the suffering servant, of God, of the God-man, of the king in the end, who receives all glory and power and dominion and honor and receives the kingdom of God. And so this future moment that Paul sees is what motivates Paul. Why does Paul do what he does? Because he realizes that this one is Jesus Christ. Christ, that Jesus Christ is all the things that Isaiah and Ezekiel and Daniel connected together. And so Paul's mission now is simple. Prepare the Gentiles. Get the Gentiles ready for this future moment. And so this brings us to Acts 9, verses 15 through 16. And Tommy will put it up here on the screen. And listen to what Acts, Acts 9, verses 15 and 16 says. It says, For he, Paul, is a chosen instrument of mine, God, to bear the name before the Gentiles and kings and sons of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for my sake. And if the question is, why is Paul going to suffer? What we're going to learn is that Paul is going to suffer because he's the first man out to battle, that Paul is leading the charge, and that God will use Paul to break the gospel through to the Gentiles, and therefore to the ends of the earth. And so this is precisely what happens in Paul's first missionary journey. Paul sets sail in Acts, in Acts 13, and he hops on his boat, and here's his mast, and here is Paul, and he heads out. And he heads out, and eventually he lands in the town of Lystra. And here in the city, He's speaking out against the people's idolatry and telling them, hey, you are worshiping a false god and you have it all wrong and you need to listen to the message of who Jesus is and, and what Jesus did. And some of the Jews from a neighboring city catch wind of this. And so they gather all the people together and they amass this crowd. And what the crowd does is that they take stones and they hurl them and they stone Paul. And they stone Paul to such an extent that they actually think that Paul dies. And then they go, oh, there's his dead body. We don't really want to look at it. And so they take his dead body, his dead body, quote unquote, and they drag him out of the city. And the problem is, is that Paul doesn't die. And Paul, the text says that Paul gets back up. And what you would, what you would expect is that Paul would do something like, you know what, this Bible stuff really isn't for me this Gentile, you know, mission and the future glory of Christ. You know what? This stuff is great and this moment is like epic and all, but I almost died. So you'd expect Paul to go, you know, maybe I'll go back to making tents or do whatever I was doing before. But instead in Acts 14, the text says that Paul gets up and he goes to the next city and he continues preaching the gospel. And that Paul is so fixed and set on the good news of Jesus Christ, that Paul is compelled at all costs to tell people that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he is the God-man, God truly God and man truly man, that he came down, that he lived the life that we couldn't, that he died the death that we deserved, and that on the cross he bore the wrath of God, that he paid the penalty for our sins in full, and that though he was buried on the third day, he rose again from the grave. And that in his personhood and work, you learn that Jesus Christ conquered sin and he also conquered death. And that in him, we have all the things that we need most in life, whether that be forgiveness, reconciliation, where our relationship with God can be mended, or the righteousness of Jesus Christ and eternal life. That for those who turn away from their sin, and surrender and bend the knee to Jesus as their Savior and Lord, bend the knee and recognize Him as the King, that those are the ones who receives what they need most in life. And Paul says that is the message. And that even if it costs Paul his life, he is a man that is marked and fixed and set as a person of devotion, that at all cost 
he is going to be preaching the gospel, even to people who hate him, even to people who want to kill him, because the gospel is what drives everything, that the gospel is the resolution, and that the gospel is what will move and set and enact this future moment. It is what gets the Gentiles to this moment right here. And so in this narrative, in Paul's first missionary journey, you learn that he is a man that will suffer and that he is a man who cares immensely about the gospel, even if that means that he dies. And so that has been episode two of Bible Time. Stay tuned for tomorrow. All right, that is the end of episode two. Now it is time for Question Time with Tommy. We got two questions today. First one's pretty easy if you were listening. Second one is kind of a doozy. All right, first one. What city did Paul sail to? And the second question is, would you follow Jesus even if it meant you had to suffer like Paul did? Why or why not? All right, that's it. We'll see you guys tomorrow.